what do you do? What do you do when you think God has forsaken you? In Exodus, the children of Israel had evidently arrived at that point. Moses had gone up into the mountain of Sinai, meeting with God. And for some reason, they began to doubt whether Moses was going to come back. They thought Moses and God had their own thing going on and that he wasn't concerned about them. They recognized that their deliverance was beyond human ability to achieve. So they recognized they needed God. <laughs> but what's interesting is they decided to make their own God. Yeah. They made their own God. They gave that God credit for actually delivering them from the hands of the Egyptians. It's interesting the things we do when we're not sure that God is with us. They created their own God. They communicated to Aaron and they said, Aaron, we need a God. And Aaron actually acquiesced. Because Aaron, it seems like, would have had more confidence that they weren't alone. But I don't know. You know, I see Aaron and Moses being brothers. But Aaron also recognized that Moses had uh, a very different relationship with God than he had. Aaron was actually a priest. Aaron uh, was a spokesman for many of the things that occurred while they were in Egypt. It seems like Aaron would have known better, but evidently all of us, no matter how strong or how, what capacity we've been in and functioned in and served in, we can sometimes think that people will forsake us and maybe sometimes get to the point where we feel that God has. So Aaron acquiesced to the people. I don't know if he did it because of fear. I don't know if he did it because of pressure. I really don't know. All I know is that he told them what to do. Give me your gold. I'll fashion it and make a calf. And that's what he did. They made a calf. They made a calf, likeness of maybe what Egypt had already been accustomed to. Because it's easy to find the things that we had confidence in back in the past. And so since they felt that the God of Israel had forsaken them, they reverted to the gods of their oppressors. <laughs> That's interesting how we can revert and rely on things that brought oppression rather than the God that brings liberation. lesson that I see in that text is God was fully aware of what was going on in their lives. He hadn't forsaken them. He was taking care of business that was pertaining to them. He was providing laws that would help them to have a better life, better interactions with one another. He was attending to their needs while he was attending to their needs, just because they didn't feel his presence, they began to function perversely. They began to turn on God. The things that we learn about this is God never turns on us. It's we who turn on him things that we can learn about this is that God is always attentive to us. God told Moses, the children of Israel are committing a sin. 
he knew exactly what they were doing because his ears are open to hear every situation, every cry. But his eyes are always open to see every action. He even knows the heart. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His way is not our way. He already told us he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. That's what God said. So if he won't forsake us, we are not forsaken. We are not turn our devotion to other things that we believe will bring us comfort. And to be honest, a lot of times we like to define our own gods and the things that we can find some kind of satisfaction and some kind of salvation from that will allow us to do what we want to do. The fool has said in his heart, in his heart, there is no God, or actually the fool says no God, because they really want to do what they want to do. The God that they formed, the God that they put together, the God that they formulated, was a God that allowed them to indulge in reverie, to indulge in every kind of ungodliness that they wanted to indulge in. So we have to be careful about what we do when we think God has forsaken us. We have to be careful whom we turn to when we think God has forsaken us. And we always got to remember that God said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. That's the word of Dr. J.